Everybody is lucky if they can go through life and say, I've got a best friend. Everyone's really lucky. That's, to me, that's better than winning lotto. Brendan Dorff was lucky enough to say that he was Michael's best friend. And Michael was lucky enough to have Brendan Dorff as his best mate. So would you please give a big welcome to Brendan Dorff. Thank you, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, students. Students who were at the same age as Michael when Michael was taken away from me as a mate. If you think for one second, if you look around and sit, uh, have a look at the person sitting next to you, and just imagine what it would be like if they were taken away from you. Not for a day, not for a week, but for the rest of your lives. That's the profound effect that February 1994 had for me. But from that tragedy, from that murder, what has come from it? Where did we go as a community, as mates of Michael, as friends of Michael, family of Michael? Where did we go? Okay. Started up enough is enough. And today, I'm honoured to be here to launch the Michael Marsley Peace Foundation. Today I'm going to share with you a little bit about Michael, and as I look at the banners, I see his lovely face, and see his name up there, I want to share with you what I knew, or what I uh, as his mate, felt about Michael. I met Michael in primary school, but it wasn't until we started playing t-ball and baseball together that I really got to know Michael. From that beginning, we quickly learned about teamwork. We quickly learned, like the South players, about mateship. About being on the field and looking across the defensive line and not wanting to let your mates down. On the diamond, Michael might have dropped the ball at the plate and might have struck out. But what it was about, what sport was about, the first meeting of Michael, was about mateship and making sure you don't let each other down. It's those values that I hope that Michael Marslu, Peace Foundation, will also be built on. The foundation that I met him on, on the sports field, is also the foundation that I hope that Michael Marslu Peace Foundation will grow and uh, nourish with. Unfortunately, guys, though, Michael was a Cronulla supporter, so I just thought that. <laughs> I asked our friends on, uh, through email and got together and said, is there anything that, you, that, that I might miss out that they wanted to share with Michael? And during all the discussions, the number one question kept coming up, was, which Ken alluded to, was, would Michael like all this? Would Michael like having his face up here, his name up here, and being the name of the Michael Master Peace Foundation? And at his mate, I'm going to say yes. At his mate, I really think that he would love to be in the limelight. He loved being the centre of attention. He loved performing. I remember his performances in Oklahoma, in primary school, in The Wizard of Oz. Funnily enough, I played a munchkin. <laughs> and, of course, in Guys with Dolls, which was my favourite performance of his. If he was around now, I have no doubt he would have tried out for Australian Idol, an X Factor, and without a doubt, would have been really, really successful. The other thing that our friends wanted to share with with you about Michael is that he was a personal person, meaning that you could talk to him any time. Now we went to an all boys school, which seems a bit strange that blokes would come up to another bloke and you know chat about it. But that's the type of person that Michael was. He was, he was able to talk to anybody, and anybody in the playground was able to come up and talk to him. It also meant that when we went down to the train station or went down to the mall, there would always be about five or six girls accompanying him, because that's the type of personal person that he was. Michael also knew what to say, and more importantly, Ken has also said, and others speak to that, he knew how to act, he knew how to motivate, he knew how to participate, and he knew how to engage. And it's those things, not only did Michael know what to say, and, but he knew how to act and motivate, which, like the Michael Marshall Peace Foundation, I hope will engage others, engage the people here, the young people here, and all of us here, to participate in peace, to move towards peace. Often, our friends felt that after speaking to Michael, they felt because he knew what to say, they'd be closer to peace. One of the things that, that surprised me that I got from my friends or our friends uh, when I said that I was coming here to speak was that Michael never had a bad day. And it really took me some time to think about it and think, 
And as I, as I remember, Michael, that's so true. He really, really didn't, never had a bad day. Maybe that because I knew him a little bit better, I remember three bad days that he had. But when you consider about the 150 da bad days that I had per year, and you compare it to Michael's three days of the lifetime that I knew him, it really goes to show that Michael wasn't just a person that never had a bad day, but more importantly, he didn't, he didn't let you know it. He didn't let you be affected by his bad day. And don't think for one second that Michael floated around and was you know, uh, oblivious to what was going on in the world. He was just a happy little chap all the time. No, this wasn't the case. What, what, by saying that he never had a bad day, he would make sure that his bad day would never wreck other people's day of peace. He would never let other people's opportunity to get to peace that day be ruined by his bad day. Now, I don't want to say that Michael and I had a hard school life, but when you had Ken's receipt, which was a bit rounder, by the way, um, like Michael had, and he loved to break out in song and dance in the playground, you've got to remember, uh, for the young people, if you want to update the status in the old days, before Twitter and before Facebook, you have to actually go out in the playground and tell people. You couldn't just post it on a wall. So Michael used to love breaking out his song. And when your best mate, myself, is four foot nothing, is a uh, Vietnamese Dutch Aussie, you knew life was always going to be interesting at school. I'm not going to say it was hard or as difficult, it was just interesting. But nonetheless, we both decided to become teachers. Michael decided to become a primary school teacher, and I decided to become a high school teacher. And obviously, life teaching, it's all about sharing, caring, and all those things. We also, I'll also admit that we also plan to have, uh, when we had kids and families, hopefully uh, have school holidays together and have our families holidaying together. But unfortunately, that's you know, not going to be the case. But Michael, from speaking to his prep teachers, speaking to the kids that he uh, touched on the first uh, year of teaching, he was just sharing caring and was able to teach values and instill virtues in children that he taught. And like Ken, he was an educator, but not just an educator of a curriculum, but also educator to mot motivate young people, to give them the tools and to give them the traits that would enable them to either get to peace, to get to their goals and to get to their missions. Now the next bit I have to speculate because obviously Michael isn't around and I'm not sure whether he would be. But I'd like to think that Michael would be one of those one or two teachers that really, really motivated people. If you think about your own schooling, you, you come across lots and lots of teachers in life. And the students now at the moment probably have lots of teachers as well. But there's always those one or two teachers that really had a profound effect on you. There's one or two teachers who through their role modelling, through being themselves, through being even more than themselves, or perhaps the way they taught, have a profound effect on you that even they don't know. That they've influenced you in ways that, that they can't even imagine. I'd like to think that Michael would have been one of those teachers. And from all things that, speaking to Michael, that he was one of those teachers. And that's the same with the Michael Marsley Peace Foundation. I hope it's one of those uh, one or two organisations that not just launch themselves in Australia, and like Ken said, internationally. It's one of the two organisations in the world that really have a profound effect on people, that change people's lives and gives an opportunity for us as a community, Australia and the world, to get to peace. So after sharing a small piece of Michael with you, I'm confident in saying that Michael Marzu would be a founding member of the Michael Marzu Peace Foundation. He'd be an active member, he'd be on the committee, and he'd be running around, singing and dancing in the hallways, motivating people to peace. He'd also like me to thank you all for continuing his journey, his legacy, his living memory, and being his mate. Thanks for being part of the Michael Marsden Peace Foundation.